previously on the Frontier Farmer. And autumn has well and truly kicked in and what you'll notice about these two is they are absolutely rife with weeds and we've got 40,000 litres of silage in there and I've had a wacky idea to buy a set of auger wagons which is going to help us store it. So we have a auger wagon train, one, two and three carriages. So I'm going to get loading and our nice little silage convoy can be stored there for us to come and top up from when we need to. Turn our sprayer on and yes, we are zapping all those weeds. That is what we want. Now I've heard from the local forestry commission and they have talked about doing some sort of forestry to clear space for a potential small settlement. So we are near enough weed free. I'm going to grab a cup of tea and continue to mull over whether we should help out the forestry commission with their project. Welcome back to the Frontier Farm at the Dark Forest. We are now in a cloudy November morning and I'm feeding the chickens first thing because they are starting to chew through all the grain we feed them because there's a lot of them now and I'm just nudging a, and running over a couple as we try and feed them. Look out girls, they are always quite pesky. But yep, we are in November now and fortunately we've got all of our fields in a very good position. In Burfield we've got our wheat, in field number four we've got barley and field number three canola and they are all in their first stages of growth and fortunately we've got them all to the secondary level of fertilizer and weeded them thoroughly. So really these don't need to be touched till harvest time which means we've got quite a long period of time to immerse ourselves in a winter project. And you recall that we heard from the Forestry Commission, the Dark Forest Forestry Commission. First I've heard of them, they uh, sent me a rather nice letter and they've decided that they want to start a small settlement in the Dark Forest and they asked for our help. And thanks to you, I've uh, obviously put that question out as to whether we should accept this contract to work for the Forestry Commission. And I'm pleased to say it was a overwhelming yes. So I've got back in touch with them and said, yep, we're happy to help them out, set up a settlement. The document does cover quite a good plan of where they are going to place it. And I've also heard that they've had a bustle of activity in the last week or so, setting up some markers for us to work to. So if we take a look at the map and if I overlay the letter, they want us to produce a track off of the track that we made from the distribution center to the homestead and weave it through the forest all the way to this area over the other side of the lake. And it's going to be sort of between the lake and this gap feature up here where they want us to start clearing for the settlement to be built so yeah that's quite interesting and they've marked this area out and they've also delivered some equipment for us down at the distribution center so i think the first port call is going to check that out now as it's all going to be forestry orientated i think the skidder is the vehicle of choice so we'll hop in the taff and head on over 
through the distribution center to see what they've got for us. Uh -huh, I think I can see a marker here to the left. Yep, I wasn't there before. And I think, yep, there's one the other side of it and a bit of an indent in the forest. So I think that is where the track is going to head in. Yep, we'll get that confirmed. So let's head over to the distribution center. So I think they said it's around the back when they telephoned. Ah, yes, here we go. So looks like they've left quite a bit for us. Let's uh, hop out and take a little look. So looks like we've got some sort of bulldozer here with a blade on the front and it's on a nice little low loader for us. Aha, and they've given us quite a nice looking truck. Now, we have definitely been in need of a nice truck, but shame this isn't ours, but we get to use it, which is quite useful. Let's have a look. See, uh, oh, there's no keys at the moment. Can't get in there. But uh, yeah, maybe they've left the keys somewhere for us. Uh, they did say that they were bringing a new device. It's called a Yarder and it's all a bit of a cable network for winching trees. Not sure if we're going to use this because uh, we've got a handy skidder for winching trees, but could come in handy. We never know. And they said, obviously, the volume of trees that we're going to be cutting down. They've brought us a wood crane. Now, I've never used one of these before and definitely haven't assembled one, so I might need a bit of help from them to get it all assembled. I imagine this is going to be used later on once we've made a decent enough clearing. But I think that is it. Oh, God. Hello. You must be David. That's right. Yep. Heard from you. Thanks very much for bringing all the equipment over. I guess you've got the, uh, the keys for everything. Super. Well, thanks very much. And yeah, apologies for having a little bit of a nose at the equipment before coming over to say hello. But we will get cracking. Thanks very much. Right. So I think first port of call is probably jumping in the truck and getting the dozer over to where we need to start clearing the path. I'm guessing this is going to be used for clearing the path. So let's hop in the truck now that we've got the keys. And this is the Lizard D754. And we can fire it up. There we go. That's handy. And obviously this has been transported here from far away. So it's already set for transit. And we can just head over to where we need to get started. Fantastic. Now this is quite an exciting moment for the homestead and the dark forest. It's probably the biggest activity that's taken place here in probably forever. Because uh, we were one of the first settlers here. But obviously it's a very large forest sprawling thousands upon thousands of square miles. And the Forestry Commission has come to hear of our activity here and ask for our help to get some sort of settlement going. Now obviously a forestry commission is to help preserve the forest but it also is to make sure it's healthy and not getting too overrun with certain types of trees and everything else. And also there is uh, the industry that thrives off of trees and they have to manage the balance somehow. So. Yeah, I guess they've opted to create some sort of settlement so we can start to make use of the forest and all of its materials. Right, so I think we will set down here and we'll lower the back of this low loader. Okay, I think that's done it. And we can unlatch it because we will need to drive it off. And I think we can probably just turn off the truck for now because really the first job is going to be just inspecting the path now they did say that there's going to be some trees to cut down where are we yet we need to follow the track quite carefully so yet yeah, there's some trees to cut down so we'll have to get the skid steer and the blade to cut these trees down and then we'll probably use the skidder to winch the trees somewhere sensible for the time being so let's go get the skid steer with the blade and then we'll need to run back and get the skidder. 
Mm -hmm. I couldn't remember quite where we parked it, but of course we used this to scrape up the remnants of our silage bunker, which is now no more. And of course we put all of our silage into our silage train, which is the series of auger wagons parked just over there next to the sawmill. And yeah, that will serve us quite well when we next need to do a batch of TMR. So yeah, fantastic. Right, we need the buzzsaw on the front and not reverse because I don't want to damage our lovely shed. And let's head over and then we can grab the skidder as well. Right, we'll plonk the skid steer here for now and just run up the track and go and get skidder. Oh, and uh, Dave, David has uh, gone. I'm guessing he must have got picked up because there's no other machines here. And silly us, we left the skidder running. That could have saved some diesel and also could have got nicked. Now there's uh, other people roaming around the forest. We do need to be more considerate of all of our equipment. And let's head on down and get this parked up somewhere because we will need it after we've cleared all the trees on the track. A job and we can turn the lights off as well, save the battery. Okay, so it's driving through here, clearing the trees from the track and then I think what we'll do is we'll head up the track and then on the way back we will walk and clear the branches from the trees, delim them and then see to the stumps. We can fire up, beacon on, set the blade going, make sure we're at a decent level on the blade to make some cuts, and we can get started with our first tree. So let's head on in, hopefully we get the right angle, this is one of the thicker trees. Nope, always with these bigger trees I need to work my way around to try and find the best angle to cut. But leave this with me and I'll see you when we've got a nice clear track. there we go so we have cut down the trees cleared the stumps and delimbed the logs and i've just shunted some of them to the side of the track now i wasn't being lazy i obviously will deal with these trees later on but we really need a clearing first of all to be able to have a place to store the logs and of course if we're going to get that wood crane in here to help us lift them we are going to need quite a sizable space and we're only going to get that once we've cleared some of the forest but now that we are at the end of the track we can see here where it shifts and it looks like there's a border to follow and it's uh, got some slightly different barriers here to indicate that and they did say that they wanted to keep the trees too deep from the uh, border with the lake and that's to help sort of shield it 
and also for conservation of the forest they don't want a, a settlement to be too visible so yep yeah, that's pretty good and this runs all the way around so yeah we've got a nicely clear indicated uh, situation and position for us to clear all the trees down to make room for the settlement so next job is bringing the bulldozer up here and the bulldozer is going to clear all of the grass and the shrubs and make it a bit of a smoother road for us and of course we did buy our road making tool when we made a road from the homestead to the animal dealer and we're not going to be using that today we have obviously been provided with a bulldozer so it makes sense for us to make use of that because that's potentially a better tool for the job so let us hop in it first time i've driven a bulldozer so we will have to check it out all right the caterpillar d7 there we go cranked into life let's see if we can safely get it off here it's reversing so there we go that's a start and we're sliding off metal on metal a little bit dangerous at times but there we go we can reverse and hear the caterpillars clacking away there we go bit of an old beast this but i think it's going to do the job quite nicely yeah, let's get it set up and see if we can start making some track. So I think it's simply a matter of lining up and dropping the blade. And there we go. We are going to start forming a track and yeah, flattening it as we go. So that's pretty handy. But yeah, let's uh, just take a little turn okay i think we are going to maybe need to lower it a little bit more so we are getting the full section of the track cut we don't want to just be making tire tracks there we go so we are making a track we're leaving a little bit of the grass where we can't just quite get to it but we are going to get this all cleared so leave this with me and hopefully once we're finished we're going to have a nice track road And there we go. So we'll lift up our blade. And we have indeed cleared a nice track. And that's pretty fantastic. I think this bulldozer has done a great job. It seems to compact as it's going. Now it's not 100% perfect. There's still a little bit of grass stuck around there. And there's me stuck on one of the bollards. But yeah. I think that's a pretty fair track. Nice and wide for us to get some big equipment down. Now, there's a couple of branches in the way, but that's not going to cause too much of a problem. There we go. Track created. Now, I think what we are going to do is probably look to... Yeah, I think we need to clear some of the foliage that is around this area. Just so it's nice and easy to operate in and there's no bushes and things like that it's not too big an area so if i treat it sort of like a plow and just go around and around that would be best so let's move the skid steer and the skidder out of the way and we can do the rounds with the bulldozer and yeah i'll just go around and around in circles and once that's all cleared hopefully you should be able to see 
the wood through the trees that we need to cut down in the area a little bit clearer without all these tall bushes in the way back in the bulldozer and what we can do is lower away again once more make sure we are lowered to the correct height and make sure we're getting the forest ground appropriately there we go and if we set off should hopefully start to clear bushes clear the foliage and so forth now we'll have to tree dodge of course so yeah i'll weave around the trees but i want to try and get as many of the bushes as possible so yeah i'm gonna duck and weave get this all cleared and i'll see you when we're finished There we go, we're finishing the last strip and I'm just going to keep on pushing around so I can deposit the stone somewhere sensible. Now you might notice there's a few deer running around and it looks like we've disturbed them. They were probably trolling around here and foraging for food. And it's a little bit bittersweet if I'm honest. Obviously we've had to clear space for our own living situation at the homestead, but we are expanding into the forest and a settlement is going to bring lots more human contact and yeah it's uh it's definitely a bit of a bittersweet moment because we do enjoy the wild nature and obviously the complete frontierness of the dark forest um so it is changing and nature is going to get impacted in the places that we do expand and build so I like to think that the Forestry Commission has taken that into consideration by making the decision to set up a settlement here. And I'm sure the impact is going to be very minimal. We are trying to make things work where possible. And there's also been some mention about setting up uh, some feeding spots, uh, not to sort of interfere with nature, but to help it. And also to make sure we don't disturb them and they don't disturb us. So, yep. I'm hoping that we're going to be able to mitigate the impact on some of the critters and creatures around the dark forest. So that is the area all cleared and I'm very pleased that we decided to do that because we can now see clearly where we've got to clear trees. Now the uh, bulldozer has done a grand job but it is a little bit slow but uh, yep yeah, it's pushing a lot of dirt and debris so it's uh, done a pretty good job in my book, but we can shut it off and hop out. There we go. Now it's back to the skid steer. And as you can see, we've got a nice open space for us to see how many trees we've got to cut down. And we'll cut uh, a few, probably in fours and fives, delimb them, cut the stumps out and then winch them into some sort of central area. So we've got a nice log pile that we can come and hopefully use the crane, uh, probably not today, but later on to get them all loaded and carted away. So let's hop back in the skid steer. It's back to more cutting. We're at midday, so we've got a little bit of time left uh, before about three o'clock is when we start to lose the light. And yeah, I don't want to be working in here too late when it gets dark. We you know there are a few rogue things wandering around here, wolves and 
God only knows what. Um, but yeah, we'll try and avoid that. Right, I'm heading dead centre because I think this tree right in front of me is the one I'm going to cut down first. There we go. Timber. Fantastic. Right, and I'm going to try and cut them all the same way. So you can try and orientate the log pile the same way as well. Oh, look, there's more deer over there to the right looking at me like I'm destroying their home. It does make me feel quite guilty, but it's what we've been asked to do. So we're going to do it, and there's plenty more forest for them to utilise. So let's crack on, get some trees cut down, get them delimbed and stumps cleared, and hopefully we can get this area looking nice and clear, ready for construction.
Okay, so we have cleared this smaller half of the forest and we've got a nice pile of logs already captured. We'd have to trim the ends of some just so I could maneuver them into the pile. And yeah, I've been using the buzz cutter apart from when I use the chainsaw for three very large trunked trees that we have and the buzz cutter does tend to struggle with the angle of cutting for those so just use the trusty old chainsaw for those three but for the rest it was indeed the buzz saw and that proved to be very efficient actually we've cut down quite a large volume of trees and got them all nicely stacked and placed together using our fantastic skidder and winch now we've got a long way to go and only about another hour and a half left of the afternoon so I am going to probably crack on get a few more trees cut down but probably not going to be able to finish this today but we'll try our very best so yeah we want to park the skidder up for now hop back in our skid steer named very similarly these items and we'll get the buzz cutter back and activated now you would have noticed in places where I cut the trees they did end up spanning a channel of water that runs off from the little river and stream that runs to the lake so that was quite interesting we had some beam walking to delimb some of the trees so that was quite fun Let's get the saw reactivated again, approach our next tree. And I've been cutting in batches of threes, fours, fives, sometimes a little bit more, just to make sure we are getting through them. And I try to cut where they are roughly positioned together so I can come along with the skidder nice and easily to just shunt them into the right position. So yeah, we've got one, two, I think we'll go for this one here. And when I'm approaching a pile of trees with the skidder, sometimes I go for the one that's furthest away so I can winch it closer and then grab the ones that are closer to where I actually need them to align with. So that's three. I think we can go for four here and then call that next pile. And looks like I've got the wrong angle on that. We'll approach it once more. There we go. That's four nicely cut down. I'll saw off. Turn the skid steer off. And then I've been chopping changing, pardon the pun, between using the axe and the chainsaw for cutting the stumps. And yeah, I guess that's just preference really. Could use a chainsaw to clear the stumps, but just prefer to chop them away with the axe. Right, that's one tree delimbed. Move on to the next. So the plan is that obviously houses are going to be built in this area. I'm not sure how many. Dave hasn't told me and anyone else I've spoken to at the Forestry Commission hasn't told me either. But I imagine there's space for a fair few here, possibly between five and ten most certainly. So that'll be interesting. And I hope that they're not just going to go for the same sort of log cabin or log house uh, for each house. I hope there's going to be some variety and a bit of character about them. So yeah, we will hopefully see the plans later on. But the plan is around the finances and construction is all of this wood here we are going to get to keep. And we are going to be ferrying that to our wood storage yard. That's going to be channeled into our sawmill. And of course our sawmill is geared up for making uh, building materials. And then the building materials will be sold back to the Forestry Commission. And so far they've just been selling through the distribution centre. So it might be we sell our wood products to the distribution centre that then goes to the Forestry Commission and that money that is raised is going to be used to procure the houses. Now of course it uh, sounds a bit convoluted because 
the building materials are right here, all the wood, and yes, predominantly all of the cabins are going to be built out of wood, but there are other materials as well, so hence why we take the wood, we turn it to wood goods like planks, planks long, wooden beams, prefab walls at the sawmill, we sell that to the Forestry Commission for money, and then we are in charge of building. And I believe they've talked about even further future plans of creating some form of small industry here. Things like um, a wood turner, uh, potentially another bakery and other sort of productions that are going to uh, build things from wood. Because we are obviously wood rich here in the forest. So that's exciting. So we're going to have a settlement and then potentially built... On top of that, we are going to have a small industry sector, which I guess is where all the people that are going to live in the settlement are going to work. Because you can't just live here for fun and holidays, although there might be some holiday homes. Predominantly, I think the settlers are going to be here to work. And that's all going to help the community and the settlement. So yeah, that's going to be exciting times for the frontier at the Dark Forest. Right, let's crack on and get some more trees cut down and I'll see you when we've made some good progress.
and we are finished just been taking the last logs for a little bit of a victory lap around the area and we can just shunt these back a little bit to try and line them up detach them and then just give them a nudge back into base and that is a rather large log pile so i haven't counted how many trees we felled but we have quite a lot fair to say that there is a large volume of trees there i'm not sure how many liters of wood that's going to equate to that's going to go in our wood storage yard but there we go we have cleared this entire space and it's ready for us to start building a settlement but before we do we have to clear these logs away so i think next time is probably going to be focused on getting these logs loaded and taken to our wood storage yard hopefully going to be able to use the wood crane but yep yeah, not sure what that's going to entail so we will see also got to do a bit of clearing up get rid of these uh, bollards and uh, building signs and also yes of course we've got to clear the logs from our track but we're going to leave all the equipment here for now in fact i think we're probably going to take the skidder back to the homestead because yeah we want to get back it is starting to light fade and we don't want to get caught out because we know what it's like in the dark forest there we go our lovely clearing for the settlement and also our track that leads to it fantastic in fact this track looks so good i hope that we're going to get use of the bulldozer in the future to utilize for track building as well we'll leave the lorry and the low loader there just so we can load the bulldozer up later and there's probably some more stuff we're going to need the lorry for later like getting the wood crane all right let's get back and parked up okay, so i think we can just park the skidder there because we are going to need it next time so that is it for today it's been a busy one and a very different one on the dark forest and yeah i think just in the distance there i can see our skid steer and that is where we're going to be hopefully seeing a settlement in the future yeah i hope you have enjoyed watching if you have remember to drop a like and subscribe if you haven't already if you've got any tips tricks or things you'd like me to do then feel free to leave a comment and Hope to see you again next time on the Frontier Farmer. And until then, I'll catch you later. Cheers all. Bye bye.